It's Nighttime Talk with Kerry on text, Twitter and on 0800 80 10 80 on News Talk ZB. Hi, Alison. Hello there. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. I was ringing tonight about brain exercise and memory. I am a clinician at the Auckland Memory Clinic. Oh, really? And you're talking exactly about the things that we do because we certainly can prevent memory loss now. Just a growing body of knowledge that that's saying we can do this. Really? Yes, and the more cognitive exercise we do, combined with some physical fitness as well, mm-hmm. then the more we can regrow the connections between brain neurons and keep the brain volume high and functioning well. I didn't even know there was a memory clinic. Didn't you? No, I did not, and oh, I should have known that. Well, I've moved up from Christchurch in the last year, so it's quite new for up here in Auckland. So what, who gets referred to you? People self refer or else doctors referred for memory testing and for working on strategies for the retention of memory plus we do brain fit for life classes as well Mm -hmm. um, that are a series of workshops teaching just those strategies certainly we can't prevent dementia but there's growing amount of evidence now that we can certainly push back the emergence of the symptoms of dementia I found it fascinating too that the doctors were saying they were referring to Michael Schumacher's accident but also to people who have been in, you know, who have had major brain trauma. Yes. That the brain can grow new new neural pathways, which I found fascinating. Yes, Yes, when we do the things that really stretch us mentally, we work hard at it. We literally change the structure of the brain. And it's all the, the new imaging over the last decade or so that's given so much more knowledge. Wow, that because it has been it seems to have come in a in a quite a rush all the new research doesn't it i think it's just the same as um, a couple of decades ago it was all about heart health mm. now we know so much more about the brain and memory and it's about brain and memory health now we can do something about it <laughs> you would be able to see the difference can people who come to you see the difference yes, in, the, they do. in themselves recognize yes, it just yep. over you know our little workshops they go for five evening workshops And the feedback from them is amazing. It wakes people up, you know, to knowing that we can do something about it. We no longer need to say, well, I've got to expect it now at my age. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just not right. If people would like to try some things for themselves, go to the Brain and Memory Foundation.org. There's a whole lot of things there to practice on and to try. So the things that people generally do, like the Sudoku and things like that, do you recommend that and bridge? They're all Mm. really good, but there needs to be a variety of things and things that are novel for the particular person. Now, you know, I love doing jigsaw puzzles, and um, yeah. there's a lot of memory skills in those. Oh, but yes. they don't do me any good anymore because I just do them with ease. Right. So it has to be something that's challenging and stretching. So trying lots of new things. Learning a new language. Yeah, that would be great, yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. But it's learning new things, social engagement and talking with a lot of people. Yeah. And also there's so much evidence now about physical exercise, as you were talking about before. Mm. And with people, there's been a study not long finished that people literally walking only 15 to 20 minutes a day, five days a week, over a period of five years, were 30% less likely to have dementia symptoms. Really? Yes, and I don't know why it's not being shouted from the rooftop because it's something we can do for ourselves. And we don't just have to be helpless before it. No, know? we don't. Cause no, we don't. a lot of people see it as inevitable, don't they? Yes, they do. And if mm. you live long enough, you're going to have dementia. And certainly the odds rise as we get older. Yeah. But the, the, the pathology may still be in the brain, but the more resources and brain resources you build up, the better off you are and the longer you can perhaps not have those symptoms affect your life so badly. Wow, that's mm. really exciting, isn't it? What a cool th- what a cool area in which to work. It's wonderful. It's fun to do and it's just lovely people seeing that they actually can keep control for themselves. 
Not always, though, isn't it? Because as yes. with anything, it's the roll of a dice. Yes, it is. Mm. Yes, it is. And anything we can do to lessen our chances. It's mm. like we try and lessen our chances of other illnesses too. Yes, we do. we can do something about it. Well, that is exciting. So what was the um, website again, Alison? Brainandmemoryfoundation.org. Yeah. And that's been set up just to disseminate information about brain and memory. And there's lots of little things to try. And there's information about memory too on my own site, which is memoryclinic.co.nz. It's a lot about dementia and brain and what we can do on there too. Well, that's good because, Pete, there's nothing worse than feeling powerless, is there? You know, like feeling helpless. That's exactly right. Mm. And anything we can do has got to be good for us. You know? Absolutely. And certainly gives us the sense of gaining control and yep. having control and regaining some of the things that we've just given away by thinking, well, it just happens because we're older mm. and that's not so mm. excellent yeah. very nice to hear from you thank you Alice and that's exactly the sort of thing we were talking about this video is brought to you by Gillian Eady and Dr Alison Lamont of the Brain and Memory Foundation you'll get more free brain training with Brain Tune. it's a popular six part course and you'll get access from our website the address is on the screen we'd love to see you there